Um, I, I always thought, we'll come to Donald Trump specifically in a second, it isn't that, I was just looking back at some of our political parties over here in the UK, uh, when, when senior um, uh, officials, sometimes senior politicians, have gone to conventions or rallies or, um, uh, or, or any event uh, in that respect when it's, it comes to election time. Um, and it looks like everybody's been doing it for years, whether it's Conservatives or Labour. I, I, I can't really see anything different about this. And the 100 people that apparently went from uh, Labour did so voluntarily. That wasn't a party thing. It wasn't organised by the government, if that makes sense. Um, so it, it seems that Donald Trump, I know that you love Mr Trump, and normally you would be f wearing <laughs> one of those uh, uh, Make American Great hats uh, again, Matthew. Uh, but he's not right on this, is he? He's, Donald Trump has got this a bit wrong. I think so. I mean, when Nigel Farage and Liz Truss uh, expressed support for Trump, he was thrilled and he touted it. He showed it off on TV. Uh, and yeah, it is something that that is relatively common for for foreign officials to do uh, in the United States. For me, though, when I was you know a career government official, I would never have thought of doing that. I mean, we weren't supposed to in any way express any political support for anyone outside or inside the U.S. government. Mm. So uh, it's weird for me as a former American official, but it's not on usual uh, in UK politics or for UK politicians to come over uh, yeah. for staff. Indeed. Why does it, um, I, I mean, I suppose you know, when somebody goes to lend support or lend an ear or a bit of advice, although I can't imagine what, what advice anybody wants from our current government, but that's a whole other story. But when, I mean, even if you did proffer some advice, does that break a rule in some respect? It, it doesn't necessarily break a rule. It, it does break a rule for, for American officials, yeah. Um, in the reverse, it doesn't break any rule, but there's there, you know, there are laws against uh, any foreign source of campaign financing, so advice doesn't fall into that category legally. Mm -hmm. But it's it's weird. Uh, it suggests that there's a, a preference on the part of a uh, foreign government for who wins the election. That can create serious problems for that foreign government if yeah. the other person wins, right? Uh, and it just makes it look like somebody's trying to put their finger on the scale, somebody who's not from the U.S. political system. I do. I mean, the most high profile case I can remember of somebody coming over from another country to talk about an election was Obama coming over here to talk about yep. Brexit. I'm sure you yep. remember that. I do. I do. And he also, when he was running for office, did a, a huge appearance in Berlin. If you remember that one, it was like a, a political rally almost in Berlin. Yeah. My own experience, though, speaking of Berlin, I was once uh, given an assignment to go talk to a, 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 a junior minister in the German government, and I was proffering our advice on energy policy. And after about 30 minutes, uh, he politely had enough. He said, I'm going to ask you to leave now. We don't need Americans giving us advice on how to run our country. So. Wow. I bet that well, you, you didn't pencil that one in as being the conclusion to the meeting. I mean, <laughs> I'm guessing. <laughs> no, not successful. They're quite forthright in Germany, I think we can safely say. And um, I, I remember uh, Bill Clinton talking at a Labour Party conference. Now, he wasn't the president then. I think they... I think they probably paid him his speaking fee, which is probably like a trillion dollars or something, to get Big Bill over there, wherever the heck it was. I can't remember now. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, that would still be seen as, a, you know, about as high profile a figure as you can possibly get. That was at their party conference. It wasn't an election, so slightly different. But the, the point I'm making, Matthew, is that there are certain synergies between some politicians and there always has been. Yeah, that's true. And affinities. And look, I mean, I, all my friends and I had very strong views on Brexit or, or on the Scottish independence referendum. But but never would we have imagined sharing them with anybody in the UK. I mean, I mean, my friends in government. Yeah. But yeah, there are affinities. You have a right to have any political views you wish. Uh, you have a private right, I guess, in the UK, if, if you're a staffer for the prime minister to to get involved like that. Uh, but again, for me, the way I was raised professionally, that's just it's it's not something you should do, but those are our rules in the US. Well, indeed. And so with these two senior allies of Keir Starmer, and, and one of them, uh, a man called Morgan McSweeney, that really is a name, I promise you, Matthew, but he he uh, is obviously the uh, chief of staff um, who was appointed very, very recently. He wasn't the chief of staff when he went, but nonetheless, um, the fact that he was there is that should anybody be feeling uncomfortable about that? Is it uh, is it dangerous in any way or does it just break a kind of unwritten convention? 
It's, I don't think it's dangerous in any way. I think it's, it's again, as I said a moment ago, it's possibly problematic for for m m Mr. McSweeney if if uh, Kamala Harris or if uh, uh, Donald Trump wins, right? It, you know, yeah, could yeah. blow back the UK government. But I, I don't think it's, I, I don't think it's necessarily in any way dangerous. I, I just, uh, I, I think maybe you know, it suggests that the people who do that sort of thing, that sort of support, are in it more maybe for themselves because. Yeah. How are they going to be able to advise a U.S. presidential candidate well, better than... Uh, yeah, that's that's very true. But I, I guess, as you rightly alluded to at the beginning, Matthew, this is, it will make it tricky if Trump wins the election. Um, and he's Mr. Trump has made a big thing about this. I know it's not quite such a big thing in the States, but it's certainly made headlines over here because it, it feeds into quite a lot of other narratives about the current government. If that is the case, then, you know, the smart money says, you know, Donald Trump uh, is not going to be... You know, well, Keir Starmer's not going to be first on the the Donald Trump Christmas card list. Yeah, I mean, let's face it, probably Keir Starmer wouldn't have been anyway because of the ideological differences. True. But and there's only so much, I think, so much discord that can happen in the so-called special relationship, yeah. you know, between the U.S. and the U.K. Uh, and I mean, I always felt that throughout my career too. It's like you know, you're there with family members. I mean, you have different views, you may argue a bit, but at the end of the day, you really are with each other. And I think I think that sense will survive this current spat. Yeah. Oh, there, there are exceptions to that, of course. And I, I suppose Blair and Bush would be the most obvious um, exception, where you had a conservative, uh, oh, yeah. uh, a, a, a Republican um, president and a, a Labour prime minister who became you know, about as close as two people, other than Thatcher and Reagan, they came about as close as two people can get. Yeah, that's true. I was actually in the White House at that time covering uh, Central Asia and, you know, bordering Afghanistan. And so on September 12th or 13th, when Tony Blair called uh, George W. Bush, uh, I have to say, man, the president really felt uh, the same thing I was just saying, like, thank God we have these friends at this time of great need. So that really, I think, really cemented the human relationship, despite the ideological differences. Sure. Uh, just a final one, Matthew. Who's going to win this uh, election? It's only two weeks away. Um, I know you're not necessarily a man that would uh, nail your Trump colours to the mast. Um, <laughs> Kamala Harris, I think I can speak for most human beings if I say that I don't think she's the most political operator that's ever stepped into American politics. Um, and let's be honest, a lot of Democrats up until about half an hour ago had never heard of her, let alone vote for her, but that's a whole other story. Um, so, I mean, the, the choice is interesting. It's looking pretty close. I know it comes down to a few states, but... Uh, and, and it seems to waver between one and the other. What is your assessment of who is likely to be walking into the Oval Office at the end of next month? Right. And, and well, beginning uh, of by next the way, month. I asked my Republican or Democrat friends, and each of them thinks their their candidate is gaining momentum. Um, so uh, it's first for sure the election is going to be decided, I think, by those who have. Um, it's not that they're necessarily undecided, but they haven't chosen whether or not actually to vote because they may not like either candidate. Mm. And so that's really hard to predict where that's going to fall out. But one signal that shows that Trump has gained momentum recently uh, is that uh, the number of regist new registrations into a political party uh, have grown significantly larger for the Republicans than, than the Democrats recently. So people who weren't going to vote, maybe, now they're signing up for the Republican Party. But, you know, the four major national U.S. polls came out today show showed uh, Harris up by three or four or three or four in, in, in each in each one. Yes, it's going to come down to a handful of votes. I mean, Biden won by like 44,000 votes total split among three states, even though he won the vote by millions. I mean, the overall national vote by millions. Yeah. So nobody knows. No, any, you know, anyone who tells you they, they think they know where the momentum is, I think they're just showing you their wishes rather than their, yeah. their analysis. I, I, I sent your spot on this. And Matthew, it's been great having you on, sir. Thank you. We will speak again, I'm sure, as we head towards...